This video is jam-packed full of ideas and hacks that you can use Dollar Tree items to create gorgeous Christmas DIYs that will really dress up your home for this Christmas season. It's already getting that time to go ahead and put some cute stuff together, so let's get into it. First up, definitely pick up one of these plastic snow globes. This pairs perfectly with one of the bubble vases from Dollar Tree. If you actually turn it upside down and stick it right on top, how gorgeous is this snowman silhouette? I love it. So I knew I needed to paint these white. I go ahead and remove the bottom of the snow globe, remove all of the papers that tells you how to make the real snow globe, and I'm going to pour in some acrylic paint. Now you can do this a couple of different ways. You could actually use a paintbrush and paint the inside of it. That does take a couple of coats of paint, or you could paint the outside but I didn't want to risk this scratching off so I am just doing the pouring method by filling it up with the acrylic paint and then just pouring as much as I can out and letting this completely dry. I'm adding the little bottom back in there and this is going to give it the perfect little neck shape so that I can tie a little ribbon for a scarf around it. I feel like this is so cute. I love how it turned out and this is so easy to do that everyone can do this. Now I played around. I had some fuzzy socks on hand from Dollar Tree so I went ahead and gave him a little black knit hat but I went ahead and traded out for a gray one just to fit more into my style and give him this black and white buffalo check ribbon for a scarf and then like I said I just did the gray sock for the hat tied it off so it had the little piece at the top and then I did use hot glue for his nose and this is going to give it more of a 3d look and be so much more fun to paint and stick out I think it makes it look more cute and then using the back of paint brushes I did dot the eyes and the mouth with just some black paint but this is one of my favorite things I think he's the cutest thing ever I am obsessed with these little Baker's Dipping Chocolate Cups. I picked these up for around $2.50 at Walmart, but they are such like a high quality chocolate. They don't taste like melted chocolate chips or a fake cheap chocolate. They actually taste really good. This is my favorite Christmas time secret to make anything taste delicious is especially dipping like my strawberries or any type of chocolate coated candy. But you also can make these really fun, trendy chocolate dip spoons that everyone is making. And I actually like to go ahead and make a regular cup of hot cocoa and then use these spoons to really make it like have that rich chocolatey flavor. My daughters love taking these little spoons and mixing it into their hot cocoa. Whenever it is hot it will melt down and then whether you're using the peppermints or mini marshmallows they will float to the top and it just makes it extra fun and we just love this. It's something that you can do as a family project, do it with your kids, but I like to just mix it up. I crushed some peppermint and sprinkled on some of the chocolate. I made some little snowmen with mini marshmallows. And then I have some of these kind of like dehydrated marshmallows. I find these in the baking section or party section at Walmart. And they are just so fun. I love adding them to my cocoa bar. I also pick up these mini little bags in the Walmart baking section. And it's the perfect size. I just tie it on there and then display these in a little mug. But these are delicious and it definitely ups your cocoa game with the benefits of not having to to melt chocolate down in your good bowls and then never being able to get it out. I was dying to make a little neutral colored Christmas village. So I thought it would be fun to use these to actually create a base. So first off, just gluing these together with my hot glue. You could always use super glue or wood glue if you have extra time. But just putting these together and then you also can put like wood support underneath if you want a stronger hold. But I am just jumping in and going ahead and getting those glued together and then taking some white paint and not completely painting this but dry brushing it over because I love the look of that wood showing through. So after it was completely dry, I wanted to add in my houses. I found these adorable little metal houses at Dollar Tree, and I wanna share with you that you can use all of the colors um, that you want to, 
but for my style, I wanted it to be just solid white, more of like a winter wonderland little village. So I actually spray painted these little houses and I shared that in a previous video, but I thought they would be perfect for this project. So using some Dollar Tree white felt, I actually cut it down to size. I made the front just a little bit jagged so it wouldn't look like a perfect square in the front and be like a blanket of snow and then glued this over the top and this is just going to give me the perfect base that I can start to decorate. I just got everything glued down including the houses and just put a little bit of hot glue on the bottom. Now this is really what's going to make it look like a winter wonderland by adding in all of that sparkly white fluffy snow. So I'm using my hot glue and just kind of trimming around the houses. I started at the bottom and then pouring on some of Dollar Tree's faux snow. You can see that I'm decorating this village. I trimmed out the little roofs of the houses and then added in some trees. There's tons of trees everywhere, Dollar General, Dollar Tree, and put the different sizes on there. And then using one of the little village trucks from Dollar Tree, put that down on there. And then I still feel like it needed a little bit more snow. So I actually went around the edges and put some hot glue so that I could just add in more sparkle. And I love this. It looks so elegant and beautiful, lit up, and one of my favorite DIYs. Next up, I had this really fun, unique idea that I could make like a tri-folding photo frame. So it started off as just thinking a way to display pictures, but it turned into so much more. I just love it. You could hang like mini little cards or just use this as a decor piece or um, just display some of your favorite Christmas photos, like some smaller pictures. So love this. Using three of those mini little palette signs, I mixed mineral colored chalk paint with some water so I could get kind of like a little watered down stain effect and then went over this I love how the wood steel is kind of showing through and it doesn't just look like it's been painted with really thick paint so just going over these and then the first thing I wanted to do was go ahead and create that little holder for my photo so then I can decorate around it so using some red clothes pins I glue that on the outer pieces but then for the middle I had a really fun idea that it would be fun to use one or any type of ornament would work here but a really fun little mini ornament Ornament. This actually came from Hobby Lobby, but Dollar Tree has tons of ornaments or Walmart has inexpensive ornaments. But cut off the little jute twine hanger and then glued that in the center and then added in a ton of greenery. And I feel like that's what's giving it the extra detail and really making it look all put together. To make like some little DIY hinges so this is tri-folding, I did take a piece of red Christmas ribbon and then gluing all three pieces together, leaving that little space in between each wood plank so that it does fold. And this will stand up, you just have to bring the sides around a little bit, um, but I really, really love how this turned out. I ended up taking some Christmas cardstock and just filling in where the little photos would go and you could even leave these behind the photos and it would just add in that extra color, but a really, really fun piece that only took a few minutes to put together, but a perfect way to display your favorite Christmas memories.
so a really fun little hack if you get a visit from the elf on the shelf keep this in mind you can pick up one of these fun like sequin hats and actually make a fun sleeping bag little accessory for your elves so I just picked up this little elf from Hobby Lobby to get the perfect sizing and then I'll be able to set this out and wait for our our real elf on the shelf but I laid it down in there and then cut out the exact size I needed to fit down inside of this little sleeping bag and then turn this inside out and then glue this down actually facing each other so then I can turn it inside out. So if you like to sew, you actually could stitch this together. I figured the sequins would kind of be hard to get around, so I just went with some hot glue. I decided to make a little coordinating pillow, so kind of doing the same thing, just gluing this together, leaving a little opening. I actually stuffed a little tissue in here to make it a little bit more fluffy, but I think these are so perfect. I know that like the Elf on the Shelf accessories can be so expensive, so it's fun whenever you can DIY your own and make them for the $1.25 price point, and it's just so much fun. Like hand making custom things that you know your kids are going to love and I think it's super fun that this is actually sequins and they can move the colors back and forth. And the pillow makes it even more cute. You're able to tell that it's bedding. I love that I was able to save the little jingle bell. And then I set this out and our little elf on the shelf actually uses it. Super, super cute. I love this and a super fun surprise for the kids. Okay, so if you see these like sled shaped containers, pick one up. So many ways you can make these over. I know some people turn these into centerpieces. I just wanted to create like a fun like decorative piece with a Christmas bouquet in there. So the first thing I, I wanted to do was add the actual little bottom pieces to the sled. So I decided to cut down this dowel rod that I already have on hand, but you could use the Dollar Tree's little tower blocks if that's all you have. But what really makes this look realistic is using the jumbo popsicle sticks to glue across the front. So after I get this all put together, then I'm gonna go in and paint it but I feel like this gives it the perfect shape and this was super easy and quick to put together I thought about painting this red, but then I decided to go with more of like a, a galvanized look. So I painted it with silver spray paint and then kind of dabbing darker gray paint all over it. Now this was a brand new brush, so it was hard to get like big fluffy brush strokes. So um, I just did the best I could, but it still actually turned out really, really good. I just kind of smudged it together and made it look a little bit more realistic. And then I just put in there some of my favorite Dollar Tree flowers. I glued on one of these wooden home signs, put some more of those little snowflakes. I love those for so many different projects but then I think my favorite part was adding all of the white paint at the at the end and making it look like it was all snowy One of my favorite things to do with the Dollar Tree items is to make over the actual artwork pieces. They're already put together. It's super simple to do. For this one, I just added some little embellishments to the top corner, took my white paint, made it look like it had a little bit of snow on there, and then I'm going to be displaying this on one of those um, little like artist easels from the Dollar Tree, the little stands. They have these out and I love them. They hold up this artwork so cute. I added some little wooden pieces, but it instantly makes it over, but super simple to put together. Found these new little signs and um, these little block signs I thought they would be perfect to make over for little presents so I also think these would be really cute to use in fall you could write your own little fall sayings on these but I thought it'd be fun to use one up and down and one sideways 
while like putting some cute bows on there. So the first thing I wanted to do was cover up all of the writing. So I'm using just some scrapbooking paper, this red and white gingham. I Mod Podge these down and then I don't have a ton of Christmas ribbons out right now, but I did find some red ribbon in my stash. So that's what I'm going to be using to tie the ribbon on the front. As much as I just wanted to use everyday pieces, I did need some greenery. So I did go out in my storage totes and find um, just a little pack of these like garland tree ties. And these work perfect. I was able to cut them off and use them on so many things. But I just tied this in the middle just so it give it a little bit of extra detail and look more like cozy, like cabin Christmas. So I tied a cute little bow on there, cut off the little tails, and then for the one um, that was standing up, I kind of wanted it to be off-centered a little bit, so I tied that one up in the corner, but I feel like these look so adorable uh, standing up, and this would be a really cute idea to uh, make these and create like little custom tags, maybe your family's name or something. I frosted the little greenery with some white paint to look like it was a little bit snowy, but these are so much fun. I can't wait to make some more of these come closer to Christmas just using some different patterns. I love adding the faux snow into some shadow boxes. All you have to do is pick one of these up at the Dollar Tree and if you actually pop the back open you're able to scratch away most of like the font that's on there or the text that's on there with a razor knife. So Dollar Tree sells a pack of razor knives with a handle that you can easily scrape these off. I fill it full of faux snow and then I wanted to decorate the front with a snowman. So using some of the Dollar Tree vinyl I, I just kind of like sketched out and cut out a little snowman. He wasn't perfect but what made him so fun was adding in all the little details. I added some eyes, a nose, as well as a little ribbon scarf, and then added in some more pom-poms for his little earmuffs. I feel like these are the cutest little things sitting around. They're kind of like DIY little snow globes. My kids love walking around and kind of shaking these every once in a while, but I love displaying these in tiered trays and that pop of red color is just perfect. I always love to remind people to check your local thrift stores. You can get incredible deals here and actually repurpose all of this glassware that's going to go to waste. So I'm using a Dollar Tree little candle plate and then that little flower pot came from the thrift store. It looks like it originally came from Dollar General for about three bucks. I got it for a dollar fifty and I knew it was the perfect shape for what I needed. So the thrift store I go into has walls of this glassware. So so many things to pick from if you're going in for a, sh a specific shape that you need need you're going to find something. So I went ahead and painted both of these pieces black and then glued them down together and I want this to look like a little snowman top hat. So this shape worked perfect for me and then I went in and added a little bit of greenery and then some faux snow. You wouldn't even have to use the white paint if you didn't want to. You could just go in with some glue to attach the snow, but I really wanted it to show up and be like a bold contrast. So I am just letting the glitter stick to this wet paint, but you could add in a layer of Mod Podge, but holding some candy canes or you could even pour a candle in here. I love this. Another really neat find were these like 3D pieces. So I skipped on the butterfly. I didn't feel like that was going to blend into my Christmas decor, but I found this in a heart shape as well as a star. And I love how they do have like that little um, kind of shadow box effect where it is kind of like an inch thick around the edging. So I wanted to put some scrapbooking paper in the backing so then I would have a nice base to decorate with. I love that galvanized color, so I'm going to leave the edges as is. So the first thing I do is trace it on paper, 
and it was way too big to go in there since I traced the outside of it so I am going in and just cutting around the edges. I did cut down the star but then I realized the way that I cut it the musical notes weren't going side to side or straight in the star and it was bothering me so bad so I did trace out the star that I cut down the first time again but making sure that the little notes will go side to side this time. Now it was time to get to decorate these. I'm gonna pair these with some of these little mini gnomes that I picked up from Dollar Tree. And I just cut off the little hooks at the top um, that made them a little ornament. I set them down inside of this. Um, and this is actually called a galvanized plaque, I think. Um, but these are like really big ornaments or what I'm going to use them for. I felt like these two little gnomes inside the heart was perfect. It kind of looks like there are a couple in there. Um, and then I added this little bow to the top. I felt like it needed something at the bottom. So added in more greenery and berries. But I love those musical notes in the back and how this came together. You could add in a name or a year or a date. But so, so cute. To finish the star, I glued one of these little ornaments in there. I am so excited to find more of these little mini ornaments. I know a lot of people are finding them in different designs. This is kind of the only design I found in like this style of the ornament that's coming out, but I've seen um, like on YouTube other people finding Santas and snowmen with the little wood backings. So I think that will be fun, but just stuck that in the middle and this was really simple to make over and perfect for a Christmas ornament. Okay, so these are new to me. I do not remember these last year, these snowman shaped clear ornaments. And I thought this would be perfect to put paint in here to make these solid white. But I think it's really cool that the paint is going to be on the inside so you don't have to worry about it getting scratched up or anything. The chalk paint was really, really thick. So I did add in some acrylic and just kind of roll this around until the entire um, inside was coated with the white paint and you couldn't see through the plastic. I did leave the little lids off and let these dry out overnight and what I could tell the paint was mostly dry inside and then stuck the little caps on. I did hot glue them a tiny bit in the back and then I wanted to create some cute little scarves with my style like Christmas decor. So adding in the little checkered print ribbon and then I did dip the back of my paintbrush in black paint to really make his eyes and buttons pop. I did put it on his nose and then I ended up not liking it so I was able just to wipe it away but these are so cute. I love how all the little details show up whenever you do add in the white paint, but these just came to life, I felt like, with the little scarf and then adding the little black touches, but so, so cute. I added a little jute twine hanger and just love these on the tree. I was only able to find one pack of these little wooden gnomes at my store so I've been putting or trying to think of a really great idea on something that I could set out um, just really really cute and display him so this is actually a little color your own decor piece um, so maybe it's like a for kids I'm not sure but I wanted to hand paint this so it would be a really cute gnome that I could put on the end of these beads so the first thing I'm going to do is take some red chalk paint and just kind of outline where his clothes are but leave enough space that I can paint on his beard. I 
I did want um, the beard to have a little bit more of a realistic look rather than just kind of tracing it out. So I did kind of make it look feathered at the end. I love how it turned out. I drew on a little nose and tried to highlight it, added in tons of little white highlights as well as some black details around the edging and also painted in um, with black where his hands and his boots should go. I love Christmas crafting when I get to add in more colors to everything. I love the color red everywhere. I was easily able just to tie it to the end of this bead hanger and then I wanted to create a little tassel to put on the other end. So I'm wrapping some jute twine around my fingers till it's really really thick and also tying in some of this ribbon so it gives it a little pop of color and tie that to the end, cut the ends off of that and I love that little raveled look. So I'm doing a lot of painting in this video, but it's so, so much fun. I found these at Dollar Tree and you can see they're kind of in rough shape. They have tons of scratches. The paint isn't even like in the lines. It's kind of junky looking. So in my opinion, I thought that I could turn these into some really cute little fun Christmas friends. So that's what I'm doing. I started with the white paint. I didn't care that I was getting it on the other items on the snowman. I just went for it completely, covered up all of that ugly like bluish white scratched up paint and made it really bright white and then I'm going to be going in and adding in more details. It's always a good idea to start painting with the lightest colors first. That's why I chose white first because I knew the red and blacks would cover up all of the excess white that I kind of let spill over. I love his coat now, painting that over with red versus what it looked like before. And I feel like I'm just getting like painting in the lines a little bit nicer. I made his little gloves black and I'm kind of doling down some of these colors. I don't know why the present is yellow and red, but I changed it into like this soft green moss color and just loving how this is coming together. So a lot of the little details do have indentions on this metal so I did add back in the polka dots the best I could and made the scarf look kind of like it had the real little tassels at the end but love that red and white pop off of each other and then I'm going in and adding the hat brim and different details but you can even see like the Santa's eyes are so messed up and I'll be able to fix those up with some extra black paint. I did go a little bit more whimsical I thought it would be really cute to make these coordinating and just polka dot the Santa's coat and I love it. I think it is so fun looking. My girls love it and it's just really cute and adds, like I say, just that whimsical look. Adding in an orange carrot nose, the back of my paintbrush for little eyeballs. I do this all the time when you need the perfect little circle and then add it in the mouth. My Dollar Tree was loaded with these little paper boxes last week and you can see they come in multiple sizes, different finishes, one of them was metallic and one was not. I'm going to be using these in different ways today. So for the first couple I wanted to make some really fun bouquets. I done this back in fall and I loved how it turned out. It was so pretty. But I don't like the cheap little satin ribbon handles that it does come with. So I am replacing that with some of this wired jute twine that also came from Dollar Tree. But then the little one I thought it would be fun to mix it up and add in some wooden beads. Thank you. 
using a mixture of Dollar Tree and Walmart floral. I added in a couple of different styles of bouquets in each one and love how they turned out. Just really fun, easy pieces that you'll be able to reuse if you do need the gift bag. And then for the last couple of boxes that I had, I found this gorgeous um, tissue paper. I love that plaid pattern, and this is also from Dollar Tree. And I just picked out a couple of coordinating colors with each box and stuffed it down in there. And this works perfect if you are like putting up a Christmas tree really early and you don't have any presents wrapped under the trees. These look so adorable set underneath them. And then if you are wanting to wrap a small gift, you can just put these to good use or when you start wrapping presents you could actually reuse these for other things but love how cute these are and how they look like faux presents Walmart is selling these empty paper cups for gift cards for three bucks. You buy a gift and then you have to pay three bucks just to package it. But if you actually hold on to your older Starbucks cups, of course you want to bring these home and wash them out really, really well, disinfect them, whatever you need to do. But I actually order my little girls hot cocos from Starbucks whenever I get coffee and they put them in these mini little kids cups and they actually double cup it or they do a lot of times when I order it and I'm sure that's for safety reasons or when they hold them. I'm not sure if everyone does this, but I I always get like an extra clean cup so this is a perfect way to get to use these now of course Starbucks is going to be coming out with their uh, signature red Christmas cup and you can pick that up instead of painting them just wash that up but I feel like it looks a little bit more crafty and creative if you just give it a coat of paint and then you could add any type of decor you wanted to I just glued on a snowflake but you can put your gift card in there maybe a little bit of this basket shred and it's just a really fun way to gift that simple gift card but make it look a little bit more nice We are absolutely crazy about elf theme pieces in our house at Christmas time. So I knew I had to make an easy elf inspired mug. I started by painting it with this Christmas green color. And then Dollar Tree actually has out this like felt fabric, which works perfect for this. This like already looks like elf, <laughs> elf material to me, elf fabric. So all I did was kind of measure around how big I needed a piece to be, cut that down. And then I didn't get this perfect. I didn't measure anything. But I just started creating some triangles in this piece. And this is just going to wrap around the top like the little elf costume. Now I did start using the same piece that I cut out for a pattern. And then it kind of got old laying that out each time. So I just eyeballed it. But it turned out pretty good. And then I'm going to be hot gluing some bells on the bottom. So it's going to cover all of the imperfections. But this was too cute. I loved it. Something that my girls love. But even though you can't drink out of these, I think they make the perfect candy dishes. I decided just to glue bells on every other little pointed piece of the felt, but Dollar Tree has tiny, tiny bells. You could do every one if you went with the tiny ones, but these were a little bit heavy, so I just went ahead and just did every other one. It worked out perfect. I love the way it looks. So I just hot glued the bell straight to the felt and the mug, but you also could just like sew it on there or actually hang it with a piece of string. Of course, I had to create a fun little snowman, so I painted the inside of this mug white, and then I was able just to decorate the outside with his little face, and I love to use the back of my paintbrushes just to get the circular shape. I feel like it's a lot easier than actually using the bristles. For the carrot nose, you can actually use like four dots and make them go from like biggest to smallest and then kind of blend them together. And then I painted the handle, added some little eyelashes, once again, a little dot for the eye. And I really didn't know how I was going to use this snowman, but I ended up putting a little floral arrangement, just some Christmas pics in there, and I think it's super cute. And then every time that I use these clear mugs, I always think of fun gift ideas that you can actually give to someone. So if you pick up some hot cocoa, I like to just pick up the inexpensive kind from Walmart in these huge cans and put it in some food safe bags. I pick this up in like the cake decorating section at Walmart, fill it full of cocoa and then put some marshmallows. I like to use these mini marshmallows at the top, tie it with some really cute ribbon and just set it down inside these mugs. It's a fun, easy gift idea. You could personalize the 
outside of the mug. I didn't want to do a lot to the mug itself because I want them to be able to remove the ribbon and actually be able to use it and just not let them have to worry about taking care of it or hand washing it or whatever. I know that sometimes you can use like Sharpies to customize these and bake them. I did tie the first one and then I didn't like how short the little like tie was. So I do um, make the second one a little bit longer, but I love this mesh ribbon to really fill in the bottom. It gives it that extra pop of red color and make these like really cute coordinating gifts. If you're anything like me and you overbuy fall crafting supplies, definitely look through that because there's so many pieces you can make over. I love using these leftover scarecrows and you can flip these over and paint them like little snowmen. No worries if you don't still have this piece or you've stored all of those away. Another one of the small wooden planks would work just as well. You'll just need like a popsicle stick or something for the little hat brim, but these are so easy to put together and able to completely change these from the fall season into Christmas. Like I mentioned before, I do love using the back end of my paintbrush to get the perfect little eyes and mouth. I wanted these to look a little bit different, so I did one like a button mouth and one just drew it on there, gave them a little carrot nose, and then I feel like this really makes it pop, adding some ribbon to the bottom so it looks like they're wearing little scarves. Whenever crafting, this is my all-time favorite part is to add in all of the embellishments and little details. I love adding the greenery and berries and pine cones and then just dusting on a little bit of white paint to look like they're really snowy. so impressed with this biggest size this thing is huge and you can make these over easily with a pair of socks so I picked up these like knee-high fuzzy fleece socks and I'm actually going to put the ornament down inside the sock and actually push it all the way to the bottom and kind of give this like a sweater covered material I feel like this looks so cool it's gonna add so much texture to your Christmas tree and like I mentioned these are huge so if you're decorating a big tree you can put these all over it's not gonna cost you a lot of money you are going to to get to make two per set of socks and then all I did was replace the lid add a little hot glue around the top and then push the end of the fabric into it and you're never going to know that this has a seam but I felt like it was going to be too thick if I did try to tuck it down inside but this worked perfect I just added a little bow to the top but absolutely love how these turned out Next up, I wanted to create an adorable little snowman head, but I needed the ornament to be white. So a really great option is to actually pour some acrylic paint. I like to use acrylic because it is a lot thinner than the chalk paint, so it's going to move around the ornament and coat it a lot more evenly on the inside. So this is old paint, so I um, was worried about the water being at the top, so I made sure that I shook it up really well, and then put it inside the ornament, and then I'm going to coat the entire thing. And an awesome thing about this is that all the paint is going to be safe on the inside so nothing's going to scratch off and it is going to be protected. I like to let this dry like on a dowel rod or a paintbrush turned upside down. All of the excess paint kind of drains out of it and then I was able to start decorating it. So I went ahead and replaced the top and definitely glue these down in place or they will pull off easily. But then using another sock I went with this gray and white one and for the little snowman this is what's going to create his adorable little like snow toboggan. Do I feel so blessed that I can be with you Cause God knows that I've been longing for you Just so I folded over the top of the sock and then I'm going to slide it on here. Now, it didn't fit perfectly. It kept wanting to pop off. So I'm using hot glue along the way just to keep this tack down in place. And then I did make sure that the little top of the sock was pushed up a little taller in the front. So I will have a lot of space to create his face. To get the cute little toboggan look, I just tied the top of the sock right under the heel and then cut it off kind of at an angle so it looked more like a little pom-pom. But this is so adorable. 
available and then you could decorate this however you would like but Dollar Tree has out so many socks right now a super good selection especially if you grab them early and then just using the back of my paintbrush I'm dipping that in some black paint to create an easy little face and then I even give him a little orange carrot nose Walmart has out a ton of these dome shaped like snow globe uh, ornaments and I knew that you could make these at home. So Dollar Tree ha actually has out this set of disposable like wine glasses and drinking ware in the party section. So these actually are already like taken apart and perfect. You just pull out one of the glass tops and then you can turn this over and attach it to one of these little wood slices from the Dollar Tree and it's going to create like the same look. So I did go ahead and paint the top with this gold paint just to kind of camouflage it in it was kind of like oblong and um kind of sticking up so i wanted to camouflage it in i'm painting it gold and then i'll be putting some ribbon and bells up there but i put in one of these small little bottle brush trees as well as some of the faux snow glued this down and this is adorable so many ways that you could decorate this dollar tree puts out many little village people and decor pieces um that are like miniature perfect size to fit inside this little globe so so many ways you could decorate this but it turned out perfect. And then the snow sticks to the glue on the inside and kind of camouflages it in. I'm so excited that Dollar Tree has these little wooden slices, these little tree slices out right now. These are perfect for crafting. I did go ahead and attach a little hanger, just put some ribbon around it, and then started dressing it up with some bells as well as a little bit of greenery. Next up, you can add spackling to any of these MDF signs to really elevate the look, make it look so much nicer than just painting these with regular acrylic or chalk paint and just give it a really fun textured look. So for this one, I picked up a Santa. I went ahead and tried to remove the little nose and mustache and then started to paint the base. So I went ahead and made sure that I wanted to go ahead and paint it white, even though I am going to be covering this because spackling does have a tend to crack or you could miss spots. I do want the white underneath and then went ahead and painted the face and the hat and let this completely dry before adding on any of my spackling. For this project, you wouldn't have to put your spackling in an icing bag, but I already had some in there, so I thought it would be an easy way to apply it, and it actually let me make this like really swirly effect that I was going for. Now, you want to make sure that you're not getting this too thick because spackling does add a lot of weight. It's heavy, and it tends to crack if you get it super thick, but I'm just going ahead and trying to smudge as much of this spackling as I can on the beard without having to use too much. So after that dries, you can see how gorgeous and fluffy this looks but it is more of an off-white color so I do go in and add some white paint and then put his little nose in place so I could see where I needed to draw the eyes I just pulled up on Pinterest like a Santa painted face I could kind of look at some ideas of how I wanted to do his eyes I just used a sharpie and then went in with the back of a paintbrush to add the little white dots and then just brightening up this white color because it does dry like an off-white color And then just hot glued down his little mustache, and I think this is absolutely adorable. I added the little hanger back at the top, added some little greenery and berries, but this is such a cute, fun piece, and I think even added to a sign would make it even better. Mm -hmm. 
if your stores have a Dollar Tree Plus section, definitely be checking it out. My store had gorgeous pieces that I was in love with, including these huge canvas art pieces. So these were five bucks, so many different designs that would work with this technique. And this has to be one of my favorite hacks ever using the spackling. Just grab a snowy print. I went for this vintage truck. This was only $5 and it was a huge like 16 by 20 piece. And then I'm using that same spackling that I mixed up earlier to add in some texture to this artwork. It is going to just elevate this piece, make it look so nice and just kind of putting it where the snow is so it has more of like a natural look to it, kind of going where I already see that it looks like the snow has piled up and then going in with a popsicle stick or anything that you have to kind of smudge it, give it some texture. But what is super fun is going in with a wet wipe or some type of damp cloth and then just kind of patting this so not only is it going to give it more texture, but I make it look like the whole thing has snow all over it. And this dries with such a gorgeous finish and it's going to look like a high-end piece that you purchased, like a real painted original piece. I just love how this elevates any canvas like this. I've done it to a ton of the mini little $1 canvases from Dollar Tree. But now getting to do it to a huge canvas like this, only spending five bucks so you don't have a lot at stake. But this looks gorgeous when it dries. You can see how much texture and looks like there really is snow falling out of the sky. And now I'm adding some spackling to just a simple cardboard paper box that I found at Dollar Tree as well as one of these glass vases. Now the first thing I like to do is give these a coat of chalk paint. This is not only going to give it a matte finish but help it the spackling to adhere rather than just like the shiny paper on the box or the shiny glass. So let that completely dry and just getting my hands down in there and creating this fun textured look applying the spackling all around both of these containers and I've done this in the past. I did one for fall for like a high-end dupe and it turned out so gorgeous I knew I had to do one for Christmas time and this is super simple it looks a lot harder than it even is all you have to do is apply it on there and then let this completely dry I tried to go for a different look so for the big one I just rubbed it all the way around and then for this one I did more of like a vertical pattern but these look absolutely gorgeous and it's going to add in so much texture which is really what you're going for whenever you are wanting to make like a custom base Of course, the chalk paint is going to dry with a matte finish, so spraying this with some gloss clear coat really elevates this look. It makes all that texture show up and looks beautiful. I just put a Dollar Tree arrangement in here of a few of my favorite stems, but love these tiny little Christmas floral pieces as well as the berries. And then for the small one, I stuck in a piece of styrofoam as well as some of these gorgeous picks that already has these red ornaments on there and just filled them in with some LED lights. And this is such a fun lit up piece of the evenings that makes it look so cozy but so simple to do. Another incredible deal in the Dollar Tree Plus section are these huge boards for three bucks. I feel like these are a great deal. If you wanted to make a bigger craft project, you would have to glue like four, three or four of the little dollar 25 pieces together. So getting to just pay three bucks to go ahead and get a bigger piece is a really good deal to me. Now I'm just having fun here. I found these new wood slices at Dollar Tree. So I'm just painting them. I thought it would be fun to make like a little snowman and then fill in a lot of snow with more spackling. Um, so just bear with me. This is just a super fun project. I put it at the end of this video because it's not a super genius hack, but it was just me having a lot of fun. And that's what crafting is all about. 
out. All of your stuff doesn't have to turn out perfect. It's just fun to create. And in my house, crafting is huge. Not only do I craft all the time, but my daughters, I have three daughters and they love crafting. They are asking for very few toys this Christmas. They just want art supplies and craft supplies. And I am so excited about that. Um, but for this project, I just created a fun little snowman. I had a mini little hat from an ornament. I painted his face and little buttons. I went, actually went outside and found little arms that look like snowman hands out of the yard and then put the spackling all over to look like snow. The only regret I had is I wish I would have painted the back with white, like dry brushed white over the back. Um, I was sad that I didn't do that. So after it dried, I did go back in and try to add it in, but you just can't do it as well after I had all that spackling on there, especially because I added in fake snow and it was mixing in my paintbrush. And I originally thought I was going to get on my Cricut and cut out a little quote or something to put in that blank space, but I wasn't sure what to write or to get the sizing perfect. So I just added in some of these little foam snowflake stickers that I found at Dollar Tree, but I think this is super cute. My girls went crazy about it, but a fun piece and a fun way to get to use the spackling as snow. Next up, you can use one of these 98 cent stockings. Now these are just felt plain stockings and make it over into a gorgeous ice skate. So I feel like the number one thing that's really going to make this look like an ice skate is putting the little blade at the bottom. So I'm using just a cheap 30 cent piece of felt from Walmart and I just like hand drew out what I wanted it to look like. Now I am just, I didn't measure anything so I'm just sketching it out. And so I end up using this actually as a pattern because I wanted to spray paint this with some silver and I don't want any of the black lines to show through. So just trying to make me a little pattern and then cut it out again. If you didn't have the felt, I feel like you could use like the giant popsicle sticks and actually make like a real wooden blade and spray paint it silver, or you could even cut out a piece of cardboard. I wasn't sure about how well the felt would spray paint, but it actually worked really well. It still was really shiny. And then I got to work on the stocking itself. So the first thing I'm doing is using a Sharpie. Now I will be going over this with some puff paint to make it look a little bit nicer, but just gave it some stitching and then added some little uh, holes for the shoelaces because I'm going to be adding in some ribbon next. I didn't want to cut real holes in this stocking because I still want it to be usable if you wanted to use it. So I only had wide white ribbon so I cut it in half so it does shed a little bit but I will take a lighter and kind of singe the edges of that a little bit later on. But I'm trying to give it that zigzag effect like it is tied over on the other side. So just kind of gluing it back and forth until I get all the way to the top and then I kind of made like a loose bow that actually looked like someone tied their shoe to kind of hang from the top and just make it look more realistic. Like I said use the lighter and just lightly singed off all of these like little pieces where I did cut it in half and then glued the bow down but this already looks so much nicer but it looks even better after I start adding in the puff paint. If I was going to do this again, I would use the puff paint before I glued down that big bow because it kept wanting to fall over in the paint. And I just made one of these, but next time I definitely will make a set of two. These look so gorgeous hung up and you'll never know that this is like a 98 cent stocking. While shopping for all of these stockings, I found these four pack of mini ones from Walmart for 98 cents. So I knew if I grabbed six of these because there's four per pack, I would have enough to create a huge advent calendar. Now I didn't add the numbers on there. Definitely feel free to add whatever you want to. I just liked it looking plain, but I hung these from one of Dollar Tree's great big plank boards and just painted it white and then hung some ribbon down off of it so that I could use some clothespins to pin all those stockings stockings up.
go ahead and take the time to measure. You can tell that I glued them down and then popped them back up. So I'm trying to glue them down a little bit more evenly. I thought it would take the whole board, but then I had to pull them up and just kind of push them towards the middle and then securing them extra tight in the back with some large popsicle sticks. That's going to make sure these aren't going to fall off because the stockings are going to add a little bit of weight. And then depending on whatever that you put down inside them for the advent calendar. Now I didn't fill them up for this video, but I plan on putting like chapsticks and makeup and candies for my little girls. They get so excited. So just I'm planning on going to Dollar Tree and finding some tiny little things where I can put like three prizes in each stocking and then just letting them take turns pulling off one every day. Like I mentioned, I didn't add the numbers on there. I didn't want it to be more cluttered than it was already, but you definitely could be creative, add some cute little snowflake tags or plain tags or just put the number right on the stocking. You could use your Cricut to cut it out or anything that you would like, but I'm just gonna tell my girls to kind of go in order and they're getting older, so they're not just gonna rip this thing apart. They'll actually like take their time and figure out which stocking they need to take down next. Then I just added some greenery at the top and tied a little string to hang this up and I absolutely love it and cannot wait to fill this completely up for this season. First, grab four sets of these LED necklaces with these jumbo plastic bulbs, and I'm pairing this with just a normal plug-in set of the uh, Christmas lights from Dollar Tree, and I'm going to be removing these plastic bulbs from this necklace string and putting it over the top of these Christmas lights. This looks incredible. You could put this on a tree. Um, these Christmas lights that I'm going to be using in this video do not attach to each other, so you can't make them super long, but I am going to be sharing with you some really fun ways to use these for garlands or small places in your home and these turn out incredible. So all you have to do is slip the little bulb over each light and then just tack it in place with some hot glue. I actually turned my hot glue gun down to a low temp setting but I just was going to make sure that I wasn't messing with any of the wires or the lighting and I absolutely love how this turned out. How much more colorful and gorgeous that this looks. My kids went crazy for it. I just kind of displayed it on an entryway table but how much fun is this using Dollar Tree only supplies you have to try this out. If you see these baskets at Dollar Tree, grab them. I feel like they are so great to put your Christmas trees down in. It gives them more of a high-end look. I just cut a small hole in the back of this basket so I'm able to feed through the cord of my lights. So I kind of worked backwards so I'll be able to stand up my tree and then put the lights on and the cord will be in the perfect place. But, of course, Dollar Tree trees, if you pick them up, they are a little bit bare looking so I'm using some of the garland ties that I pick up there and just filling this in. I add a big chunk of styrofoam down into the basket and then put my tree down in there. I fluff out all of my branches. I am covering the bottom with some, just a piece of scrap fabric that I already had on hand. And I just like this so much more than putting in a ton of messy like Spanish moss. And then I'm gonna go ahead and wrap my lights. And then I ended up flocking this tree just with some chalk paint. You can use spray paint, but I love how the chalk paint gives it like a thick coating. Now this does take a few minutes to dry and I didn't care about getting it on the lights. I just put it all over because if you do purchase a tree like this that is flocked in the store, the lights too have a little bit of white in them. So I just went crazy with this and it made it like fall on the tops like if it was really snowing. But using Dollar Tree items to get a gorgeous tree in a basket, I've paid 20 to 30 bucks for small pre-lit up trees like this before. So I think this is a really fun DIY that's really going to elevate any space. I love centerpieces or table displays like this that actually plug in because you don't have to change out all of those batteries all the time. So I wanted to make a fun centerpiece. I picked up three of the Dollar Tree crates. I like these little flat ones. And then I'm gonna go ahead and paint this with my dark elephant chalk paint and then sand it a little bit for more of a distressed look. I 
at Dollar Tree, some of my favorite picks are these that have the different greenery. They have two silver ornaments on there, pine cones, berries. I feel like it's the biggest bang for your buck. You're not having to get tons of different um, types of picks and cut them down and glue them together. This already looks so gorgeous. And these little wooden crates make it so easy so I can just push the stem through. They lay perfectly flat and then I can just fluff up all of these little branches. So I feel like the ornaments on these are so gorgeous. Now these aren't on like the wall of floral picks at my store. They're like down in the cardboard boxes like underneath the bottom shelf. So you have to look for them and kind of pick through and find which ones you want. You can see some of these come with silver poinsettias or flowers and some of them just have the ornaments on there. So I kind of mixed it up a little bit but I love those ornaments. And then I took a little bit of my leftover ribbon from earlier projects and just kind of twisted a couple of little loops and tucked that down in the bare spots as well as some more little greenery. But I feel like this is so easy anyone can do this and then you can go in and wrap it with some of your gorgeous lights and this is going to look so pretty lit up make sure that you work your way around until the cord is in the back but anyone can do this it is using already put together pre-made floral picks from the dollar tree very inexpensive but looks gorgeous lit up in the evenings So first up, I had this really cool idea to build a little wooden box, kind of like a tree skirt for the small Christmas trees from Dollar Tree. So these are the perfect size little pieces of wood and I've been collecting them when I find them at my stores, but I'm seeing them out in all of the Crafter Square and I thought that it would fit around the tree. Now I did end up having to trim down the tree base, but it was no big deal. So I went ahead and constructed my box just by hot gluing them where they meet, as well as taking some of the tower blocks and putting a ton of glue and pushing it in there. So it just has that extra support. I know the little bases that go at the bottom of the tree are super trendy whether you are getting the woven basket ones or the metal rings which I have been seeing a couple of people share that they are finding mini ones at Dollar Tree. I'm not that lucky so I just thought this was a great way to build your own and it actually looked like nice and something that you can use from year to year. So I continue to piece those together. I put two together at a time and then turning them into this box and then securing those corners with more tower blocks just like I did in the beginning. I'm just doing this the best I could. I know I was trying to be super careful with it, not pull it apart, but this was really sturdy. And then I felt like the seams weren't as pretty. You can see that my box to get it square, I did kind of overlap it at each corner. So I'm cutting down some popsicle sticks to just make little corners to cover up the ugly edges. And I love how this looks. So whenever I get my popsicle sticks cut down to size, I'm just making sure I push them together to make a as perfect as an angle as I can get. And then you can see it didn't fit down in the box like I mentioned, so I just trimmed off the little base. I was actually really shocked, but my scissors went right through those little feet and I was able to trim them down. And then I decided that it needed to kind of stand up better <laughs> because cutting those down, it just didn't stand up. So I am just reusing a wooden pumpkin, but any other piece of wood would work. I just using just leftovers and then for the box um you could go several different ways here i think a whitewash would be really pretty as well as just staining it but i found that the dollar tree wood pieces sometimes don't take stain that great for me so i decided to go with paint using this truffle brown color and i started off super light just to see kind of the look that i was going for but just brushing this over in the same direction, but then on the corners I am going up and down. But this gives it kind of a stained look, kind of a rustic farmhouse look, so definitely paint this to match your style. I had to dress this up and not just leave it plain. So I picked up just a Dollar Tree ornament, pulling off the little hanger, and then gluing this on the front.
I even reattached the little pine cones that came off the top and it also covers up the holes that the hanger was put through. I was absolutely loving how it is looking. Now I wanted to dress up this tree. So since I'm sharing with you the base DIY, I didn't put a ton of work into the tree, but I wanna share with you how I spruce them up. Whenever I do pick up these Dollar Tree trees, they are kinda scraggly looking and not the best. So I do take some of these garland ties, also from the Dollar Tree, and kinda wrap them around the center. And then I am just giving it a faux flocked look by adding in some white chalk paint. But inside this box, I think it looks so beautiful and rustic farmhouse and perfect for that cabin cozy Christmas. Next up is my favorite project that I've made in a while. This just makes me so happy to make some snowmen. So for this, I picked up three of these wooden planks from the Dollar Tree. I think I actually ordered a huge uh, pack of them online, but it's been over a month or so ago. Um, but you can substitute with any type of wood that you find from the hardware or try to find some Dollar Tree signs this size. First thing I did was cut down the top one just a little bit. And to make this super simple, I like to use just a utility knife or razor blade. This is actually a mini one that I picked up just for small projects because I and then I couldn't find my um, bigger razor blade when I wanted to cut this down. So I did struggle a little bit getting that. But these will break off if you score them enough and you don't have to use any saws or power tools to get this cut off. So then I picked up these little yard stakes from Dollar General, but you can find them at Walmart or just use like a square dowel rod or even the painters um, sticks or anything like that paint sticks so I cut these down these were just a dollar with my handsaw and I get asked a lot why I don't secure my handsaw to the table but that's just so I can put it in the frame and show you that I am cutting it down and then glued these down in place I did space them out a little bit to make the perfect wooden snowman After I got it all assembled together, I am going in with some white chalk paint and I do want some of that natural wood color to show through the backing. So just dry brushing over the edges, but putting a lot of white paint in the middle and do this on all three planks as well as some of those back little stake pieces that you can kind of see through there. Um, but I love how this looks and you can see that wood through there. This was absolutely the most fun part, decorating this little guy up. So I went ahead and picked up a scarf and a pair of matching earmuffs from the Dollar Tree. I love this Juncture brand. They make such like high quality pieces. So I was debating how I was gonna get that scarf wrapped around it because it is super long, but I just decided to go for it and I would cut it down if I needed to and I ended up not having to. I just took some hot glue and it um, kind of tacked it up higher so it wouldn't drag the ground and then went ahead and secured on his earmuffs with some more hot glue. I was worried about his little earmuffs um, ripping off so I did add in some extra hot glue to the back and then put some little tower blocks back there just to have extra surface area to hold on to and then it was time to paint his little face so I used a sharpie to just kind of outline where I wanted his eyes I didn't worry about it getting perfect this is just a fun little craft for me and if you wanted to put this outside I would make sure it's on a covered porch and make sure you spray paint it um, with some clear spray paint but be careful because sometimes that makes sharpie or permanent minute marker bleed on your paint or kind of run so um, you might want to not use sharpie and just use the paint before you spray it but I think I'm going to keep him inside and just either put it by the fireplace or by the tree painted on a nose and then using the back of my paintbrush I added in his button mouth I 
I wanted to keep him pretty simple, so I left that as is, but if you wanted to go ahead and add an extra touch, I thought it would be really cute even if you wanted to pick up a few sticks out of the yard. You could give him some little hands or maybe hot glue some little mittens on the sides, but I left him as is, but I needed it to stand up, so I'm gluing in some of these little cubes that I picked up, these wooden cubes from Dollar Tree, and that just gave it a really nice sturdy base. And then I didn't like how the base was just this natural wood, so I did go over it with some mineral color so it's not too harsh not too light but he turned out so cute and I'll definitely be making this in a ton of more colors The Dollar Tree Real Wood is a perfect way to dress up the Dollar Tree art to make it go from just looking cheap and plain to a higher end look. So for this, I'm gonna share with you how I built a frame. Super, super easy. All I did was take four of these wooden pieces and I think they were called like chunky planks or something like that. Um, but I was able to pick up two in the 10 inch and two in the 12 inch and this worked perfect for this sign. I did have to cut down the two in the middle just about an inch shorter um, so you could look for maybe a little bit shorter ones but they were too big for the frames so I did cut that down and then it painted these with some brown truffle paint I like the distressed look so I did use sandpaper to go over that and make some of the raw wood show through which I think gives it a really fun effect and then just hot glued these directly down onto the sign so it was not hard at all just to kind of line these up and glue these down and I didn't even have to use like wood glue or anything mine's holding sturdy but if you do want like a longer hold you can opt for a different glue but I feel like this definitely dresses it up. If you do want to opt out of building the entire frame, you can just take a couple of pieces and dress this up by gluing it at the top and the bottom and it makes like this little scroll sign. So for this one, I wanted to switch it up and make it look a little bit different. So I'm painting those top and bottom pieces with this black chalk paint and then it'll look like it really coordinates and like it was supposed to go together. I glued on a little wooden bead hanger just using the Dollar Tree wooden beads and then to really make this hold on strong I glued them in between some popsicle sticks. I know I kind of had to overlap that one but this looks really cute from the front. I love the wooden bead against the black. I feel like this gives it such a polished look and hanging on the wall this looks like an actual sign that you would purchase from the store. I know if Dollar Tree puts out any little red truck decor, it's gone in a second. So I wanted to share with you how you can fix up some of these little toy wooden trucks that I found. I took each of the trucks and just kind of wedged off the little peg that was on the back um, to give them just a finished look or a smoother look than having that little ball on the back and I wanted to add in a tree. So the first thing I do was paint this with my red chalk paint. I try to be super careful around the wheels but you actually can press them forward and get in between there and then after I let that dry and then after that dried I tried to carefully go around the windows just to get them as perfect as possible, painted the wheels and then I was able to add in some decor in the back. using some garland ties, which you could use the little Dollar Tree Christmas trees and just cut them down, but I like to save those for bigger projects. So I'm just adding a piece of greenery in the back and then I thought it would be fun 
instead of just having greenery to add in my pine cones and berries that I add on everything. So just um, using some of the leftover mini little pine cones from fall, I glued those back there as well as ripping off some red berries off of some floral stems I have and adding those to. And then I took some white chalk paint and flocked over the top of this, giving it a frosted look and it looks snowy, but I thought the truck needed some snow too. So I just added that around a little bit like to the top areas that it looked like it had fallen on and you could set this on a table it'd be really cute as is but I wanted to share with you how you could also add a hanger to this I'm just tying some jute twine around each wheel adding in a little bit of hot glue to really secure this down and then um, you can also hang this as an ornament You could fix these up, change the colors, make them different colors, um, but I love how this turned out and I love how they look homemade for a fun like family sweet Christmas. Another favorite find from Dollar General are these wooden trees. So these are so beautiful and I easily to be overlooked. I kind of picked these up seeing what they were and they slide into each other just like this and I ended up loving them. So all you have to do, they, ha they come in three different sizes, a large, medium, and small one. So all you have to do is just um, slide them into the groove on each thing. And then I know we are kind of in this weird spray paint shortage. Let me know if you are having the same empty shelves as I have been having in my stores but just picked out a kind of darker shade of green that I liked that I thought went perfect for Christmas and then it spray painted these and put them near my little red truck sign which I think looks so adorable and rustic farmhouse Christmas. So technically this would be like a wedding sign I'm guessing because of the gold and it's saying till the big day but I thought this would make an adorable, inexpensive Christmas countdown, something my family always loves doing, and I actually have several of them in my house. My girls love going and updating the number all the time, so for this to make it not look so much like wedding decor or whatever it's supposed to be, I added some little greenery. I picked this really cool pack up from Ross, but um, you could use any type of Dollar Tree greenery, put it on there, and then I tied a cute little bow to put in the corner, and I just feel like this really gave it the step up into looking like actual Christmas decor but also something really fun that we can use and this sign was already put together and made beautifully so all I had to do was just add in those few extra Christmas touches and love how this came out. I was so excited whenever I found Dollar Tree carrying these tiny little gingerbread men. They were the perfect little wooden pieces to create a gorgeous garland. So I wasn't sure exactly when I started what I was going to do. So I just ended up just diving in, going ahead and painting them. Um, this hazelnut color is this gorgeous gingerbread color. So I thought the color worked perfect for that. Went ahead and just painted all of them. And then you could easily use Dollar Tree beads and jute twine, but I'm going to be using a pre-made garland. We'll be singing all the melodies until the sun comes up if you want to take the time to color your own Dollar Tree beads, go ahead, but I went ahead and spent the six bucks. This is a super long garland. I actually used half of it to decorate a little mini tree um, that I have, and then I'm using the other half for this. But I thought instead of drilling holes in these tiny little gingerbread people, I would just glue two of them together so it did look like he was on this garland. So I just counted out the beads until they were even put four beads in between each one and luckily it all worked out. I did cut off one of the ends so I was able to space it out a little bit so you can just judge how big you want your garland to be but placing all of these little gingerbread pieces together and you're not able to tell that they are just glued on there and not an actual piece of the garland. Just try to be careful and not do like me and add too much hot glue because then you have a mess and it's coming out everywhere so I did have to try to cut back on how much glue that I was adding in between each piece. So I thought 3D puff paint would be a great idea. It would kind of give it a 3D look, but you can see it wasn't coming out as precise as the little tip is. It was bubbling up and everything just wasn't giving it the detail that I wanted. So 
ended up wiping that away and using a tiny fine point paint marker and I loved it so much more. You could see the little zigzags on his arms and his legs for the frosting added in the little buttons and I just love how the lines are so tiny and you can see that extra detail. I ended up styling this on like a little DIY cocoa bar that I made and it looks adorable. So I found these um, signs in the crafter square section. I didn't know what I was going to do with it. They're like these oblong piece signs. One said heart, but then I had a really cool idea that I could put like wrapping paper behind it to let that pattern show through the letters. So I needed a sign base. So I ended up just taking a couple of these long home signs and glued them together with some popsicle sticks. And this is what I'm going to be gluing my wrapping paper onto. And then the piece sign is just a little bit smaller than this board. So it's going to show on the edges too and make, make it like a bigger sign. Dollar Tree has out gorgeous wrapping paper if you do want to keep it inexpensive. I found this wrapping paper for less than three bucks at TJ Maxx and I felt like it was a beautiful neutral color with that little pop of red and would just look really pretty behind the peace sign. So I just took my glue stick, glued this down, and then I will be whitewashing over the top of the peace sign. And then to get that excess paper off of there, I am using a piece of sandpaper and just dragging it over that edge and it will easily like peel away and remove the excess and give it that perfect edge without having to cut it with scissors. And then like I said, going to whitewash this very carefully because I do want some of that wood color to show through. Some of these letters were bothering me so bad because of like the P had all that negative space. So I did go in and kind of fill in what looked like it was missing with white paint. And I feel like it matches close enough that it does look like it is meant to kind of be like that and that they are actual letters. I drilled a couple of bigger holes at the top, added a, a string of wood beads to the top so that this could hang really pretty. I feel like the wood beads give it something extra special. And then I still feel like it needed something, so I did just take a piece of ribbon and tie it to one of the corners um, just to give it a little pop of color. Just a few extra embellishments, more of that tiny little greenery piece as well as a wooden snowflake and that just adds that extra pop. But I feel like this is a really pretty neutral sign but also looks way better than just a dollar crafter square sign. So I thought this would be an awesome way to hang photos if you wanted to on the tree. I ended up just decorating them up for this video, but I wanted to share with you how you can turn these little clipboards or photo frames into an ornament. So mine had kind of been squished a little bit, so my little clips were mashed together, so I did try to reshape them, but they were still salvageable. I ripped the little burlap bows off and replaced them with some Christmas bows just so they would match more of my Christmas style, but you could have left them on but like I say just dressing this up uh, for Christmas but I think this would be so gorgeous to hang your like little kids pictures on or even like as a gift tag or a gift to someone else you could put their photos on there or even your kids for grandma's but really cute to add the bow on there. And then um, to display these though for this video, I am cutting down some scrapbooking paper, adding on some wooden stickers and a jute twine piece just to get to hang it on the tree. I found these in my crafting stash and I know they are from a few months back, 
but I thought they would be really cute as ornaments as well. So they have these really fun shapes at the top. They're these little orna or these little calendars, but I knew that I was go never going to change these out from day to day. So, and I had never put them to good use yet. So this is what I decided to do with them. And I'm so happy I did because they look so cute. Um, these would also make really great gifts or gift tags, but like I say, they have the really cute shape at the top. So taking a razor knife or utility knife, I do kind of score across the image and break that off as even as I can. I did trim it down a little bit and then sand it down so everything was nice and even. And it also roughs it up a little bit so whenever you glue anything to it or paint it, it will like really adhere to it. So using my glue stick once again, I decided to go with some scrapbooking paper to put this faux wood on the house. And then I will be putting that black and red like buffalo check on the coffee mug. So both of these like adding the scrapbooking paper to it just gives it so much detail and adds texture without having to do a ton of painting. All the stars are shining just for you. Let's take a walk and we can follow the moon light till we reach a place we can stay. Maybe kiss a bit and dream away. And then why we're gonna go I have this pack of mini little snowflakes from Hobby Lobby, only a couple of bucks, added in a snowflake to the front, and then I wanted this to look like a cup of like hot chocolate, so I am taking some of that same like gingerbread paint and adding that to the top of this mug and just kind of rounding the edges. I feel like it really does give it that 3D look and make it look like it does have liquid in it. So, and then for the house, I do paint the roof black as well as the little chimney. And then with some coordinating rub on letters, I added the word home to the bottom. Let me give you a Christmas moment will fill with love and joy. It's a beautiful kissing on a mistletoe, baby, with you. I don't need any presents as long as I spend this day. I glued on some greenery and then I wanted just to thread on a few beads just to dress up the hanger a little bit rather than just a plain piece of jute twine and then looped over the top and uh, once again using my popsicle stick method I feel like that just gives it a super strong hold when you do cut down a tiny piece of a popsicle stick and adhere that to the back it gives it a lot more surface area to hold on to and the thread is kind of like sandwiched between the decor piece and the popsicle stick so it's really not going to go anywhere. another DIY that you can get done in just a couple of minutes and really dress up your door or patio area is to create like a cheap door hanger. So at Target Dollar Spot, I picked up this $3 circle, but you can find Dollar Tree signs that are in a circular shape. I've used that a million times, but for this, I'm just happy it's something a little bit more sturdier than the Dollar Tree ones. And I'm going to be pairing it with one of Dollar Tree's wooden words. So I found this Merry and Bright. I painted it this bright crimson red color in the way Waverly color paints going ahead and giving this a solid coat instead of just dry brushing over it so it's really gonna pop off of that white circle I didn't even have to add any extra details or anything to this. I loved how it was just plain. That was really popping off of there. And then just added a easy little bow to the top. The easiest way I love to make bows is to just cross over a piece of ribbon. I think this ribbon actually came from Hobby Lobby, but I love the red um, little checkered print on the edges. So just tied the bow with a piece of jute twine, cut the little tails down and put it on the right hand side because I liked how the words dipped down and it wasn't gonna cover the M. Okay, so for this DIY, I already had a, another sign prepped. It's a different sign that I had turned around backwards and painted with my mineral colored chalk paint, 
but I was dying to use one of those galvanized snowmen. So I did my little hack where you take a straight edge and a piece of sandpaper and just like trace it without tracing it. You're just using your sandpaper to sand away these lines so that you can see the actual boards. This is such a really cool way to avoid so much painting and distressing. And then for the snowman, I did lightly go over it. You can see I started out super light. I wasn't sure how much white paint I wanted to add to this, but kept on lightly feathering the white paint on until it was like snowy looking enough I guess for me and then went ahead and just painted this hand painted this little snowman face so I like using the back of my paint brushes so I'm using a bigger one for the eyes and then traded that out for a smaller little brush to get the bottom little mouth you could add real buttons as the buttons I went ahead and just painting painted them on to keep it simple um, but so many different things that you could do here I feel like this is what makes this sign really cool was I picked up one of those Dollar Tree styrofoam hat ornaments and I cut it down. So I was trying to use a serrated knife as well as a razor knife. The razor knife seems to go through like the fabric a lot easier, but the serrated knife goes through styrofoam really easy. So I just kind of cut off the front of the hat that was all decorated really pretty and then cut the base off and this just makes it lay flat against the sign. So I liked how it kind of made it a 3D piece. I glued the snowman down in place added his little hat to the top mine ended up fitting really well and then I decided to add these wooden snowflakes around the edges I wanted it to look like they were kind of thrown everywhere even if that meant they were kind of off the sign so I did use some of my miter shears to cut a couple of them in half and glue them in place added a rope hanger to the top and some extra little details with white paint but a really really cute sign I love how some of my signs have words on them but some of them are just about like the main decor piece. Thank you all for joining me for today. I hope you all enjoyed all of these projects. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. Make sure you are subscribed. And I'll see you in the next video. Happy crafting. Bye.